Yeah, g'day, and welcome to this episode four of my trilogy on dual bandsaw gearbox repair. As you can see, the gearbox is still empty, so I need to make up a new output shaft and then send a few things to the heat treater. Now I've got a few tasks to do this week. First one is to make another one of these, which is the output shaft. Secondly, I need to grind the wear off the drive dogs. Thirdly, I need to make a woodruff key that hasn't been chomped through a set of gears yet. And I need to true up the bore on the driven wheel. It's a bit bell shaped. Given my rate of progress on projects, I'll leave it up to you to guess how many of these four different tasks I actually get done during this week. Put your guess down in the comments section before you continue. And don't cheat, look at the end. Mail time. When I did the video making the output shaft for the door, I had an issue with trying to get the tail stock close enough and had to use a pretty crappy old live center. Somebody gave me a recommendation to try this set. So I bought it. It's come in nicely packaged from Taiwan. It's a live center, so the gag here is you've got tips that allow you to get much closer with indexable tool holders. It's all pretty nicely packaged, I must say. So there's also centers that you can use against a sharp pointed piece. And a nice big cone center, that's handy. And then there's the tool just to drive out those centers out of the taper. Now the first time I made that shaft, I used my manual tailstock. Figure I don't have everything set up for the pneumatic tailstock at this time. But the manual tailstock's neck is a bit too short, but this big pneumatic module through here, which controls the automatic tool changer, kind of pushes the tailstock too far away to be able to easily reach the part. And that's why it's time for this incredibly heavy beast. The original Schaublin 125 CNC pneumatic tailstock. Now I thought I had no fittings to connect this up, but it turns out I did buy them with my original purchase of pneumatic fittings. So just need to screw these two in, put in a couple of, what are those, four or six millimeter pneumatic lines, and I should be able to control this. Shelblin set up this system with a pair of quick disconnects into the bed here. They've got caps on them. So let's plug these in and see which way they need to go. What I've done here is just use some basic ladder logic to connect this digital input. In this case, it's the pin number three. M65 P3 retracts. M64 P3 extends. Cool. Now, obviously, once I've got my control panel built up, I'll also make some sort of a manual switch on this. But for now, it's working. Cool. All right, let's make another output shaft. Hey all you professional job shop guys, do you ever get sick of dialing in four jaw chucks? Just a very light cut to clean up that end. Got a lot of stick out there so I have to be careful. Cool, now I get to try out my new center set. The tailstock clamping force is controlled through the pneumatic pressure. Yeah, it was a bit high here. Okay, that wasn't good. I took out the soft jaws because I don't need them yet. Cranked down the jaws a bit tighter and let's see if it works this time. It doesn't push out. M64 P3. Didn't slip this time, that's good. Thank you. 
Right, that's now cooled down from its roughing cuts. Let's start finishing. Right, next I'm cutting my undercut. Okay, that's just where I wanted that bearing, nice and tight. Well, apart from forgetting the radius on the undercut here, that shaft's looking pretty nice. Hey guys, when you're finished with a tool like this, which is held together by a taper, do you disassemble it before you put it back in the box each time, or do you tend to leave them assembled until next time? I see this kind of like the threaded chuck on my bolly. Because I'm constantly switching chucks backwards and forwards, I never have any problems with the threads binding. And I'm kind of hoping it's the same here. If you take it out each time you use it, hopefully the tapers won't bind together. Well, I appreciate this pneumatic tailstock. It fits perfectly, surprisingly enough. All right.
I just noticed that big drill pushed this back in to touch the end of the vice jaws. That means it won't have drilled to the full depth, so I need to go deeper. And before I do the boring, I better recenter the part as well. It looks like a nice surface finish inside as well. Not bad. This really is a pretty amazing lathe. Well, that's the end of the turning operations. But next up, I need to make a new Woodruff key cutter. As you can see, with the first shaft I made, the cutter had the right width, but it was a too large diameter. I think it was 26 millimeter diameter, but this is only a 3 16th by 3 quarter Woodruff key, so need to make a new cutter. The steel shop gave me the end of the bar, so I'll just clean that up a little. Right, I'm going to need a center in the end for when I start grinding it. Okay, I don't have much feel for feeds and speeds for parting yet on this machine, so let's just take it easy. Before I set up and cut the teeth in this cutter, I'll set up and just bore out the center. I would prefer to support it close into the middle here, but really there's nothing in the way of machined features that are usable, because this is all pretty rough. This is even rougher. Looks like these outer diameter edges are about as good as I'm going to get.
I know that bore's cone shape. So based on those measurements, it's kind of hard to work out whether it's going to run straight afterwards. So the next thing I'll look at is set up a depth micrometer, see whether that height is equal on four places. So it's not perfect, but it's within just under two tenths of a millimeter. Let's just bore it out. another job down. I must say that geometry is a bit more aggressive than I was kind of planning. I'll go ahead and heat treat it and sharpen it, but it wouldn't surprise me if those teeth fall off, huh? Right, now to heat treat this, I'd normally use this torch, but it's getting kind of low on gas, and I don't want it to go out before this thing gets to temperature. So the next option would be to use this Bunsen burner, which I normally use to preheat my foundry furnace, but it's a bit of an overkill for this job. So if one's too hot and one's too cold, what does Goldilocks say? Well, why not bring out the middle size Bunsen burner? Quick dip in the antioxidant. Give this a bit of a polish up for tempering. I'll do the teeth on the wire wheel. Right, so I want the cutting teeth to be at about a straw colour. I'll put most of the heat into the shaft and it can rise up into the cutter. The straw colour is about 210 degrees Celsius, which is, is about 400 I think Fahrenheit. Yeah, now that shaft down here is about straw colour. Just watch for that temperature to rise up. Okay, it's got to the neck there. Now it's moving up the neck. Okay, and the teeth are getting close. Goes pretty fast at the end. Hope I haven't overheated that a bit. Guess we'll see. On this side, there's even getting tinges of purple in there, so I might have over-tempered that a little bit. This is closer to the sort of color I was looking for on this side. I now need to cut the sharp cutting edges. I just need to put a few degrees of back rake on each edge. Indexing here, just have to pull that to the side, index a tooth, and then do the next one. Right, so first up I'm grinding the secondary relief angle and once I've got that a bit wider then I'll do the primary relief angle next. Ooh. 
Well, there we have it. The best woodruff key cutter I've ever made. It doesn't matter how pretty it is, the question is, will it work? Right, last time I tried this, I clamped the whole shaft in a vise. But with only two points of contact and the way vice jaws kind of skew, it wasn't a really rigid setup and I got a bit of movement. Hopefully on the V-block it's a more rigid setup. Tools made from silver steel need to be kept nice and cool, so I'm using flood coolant here. The cutting edge has to stay below about 200 degrees Celsius, otherwise they'll quite quickly deteriorate. When I measured the depth after the cut, I knew that it had moved because it hadn't reached full depth and I had to take a second shot at recutting it, but only here in the time lapse do I see just how flexible the setup was. Let's take a look at the cutting edges and see what happens with silver steel cutting alloy steel. After grinding, maybe I should have honed those edges just a little bit, because you can see they've definitely taken some wear. Once the Clarkson's set up, it's actually really fast, which is great for just a quick freshen up of the cutting edges. Right, next up is cutting those keyways in this side. Because the shaft moved a little bit cutting the other ones, I've now put a backstop here, because all the cutting force is going to be pushing in this way. So let's hope that stops it moving again. Oops, I think the battery died on the camera during that second cut. Good. Right, well that little cut has done absolutely sterling work. Well buddy, after all that sterling work, you've earned a name for yourself, so I'm going to call you 606Key. So the last operation I need to do is just to put the oil hole through there. Right, this part is, apart from a little deburring, a finished part. Mail time! Oh wait, it's reverse mail time, because I need to send these parts away for heat treating. So I sent emails to six different heat treating companies in Germany, Austria, Czech Republic and down in Serbia. Unfortunately, only two of them responded. I think the Czech company was the first. They said they don't do plasma nitriding. They only do gas nitriding. So that was a shame, but they were very nice to contact me straight away. Austrian company, I did ask them if I'd be allowed to come and film to take some video for the, you know, for the channel, but uh, they need to talk to their manager and, and they haven't got back to me since. There was a nice offer from a gentleman in Germany who, uses a heat treater that he would drop off parts for me but I think the best option is Emil over in Romania because he's got to drop off some parts this week anyway so he just offered to put my parts in with his order get them heat treated at the same time so I really appreciate that Emil let's get this all boxed up and let's get this off to you so which of you guessed that I'd only get two of the four jobs I planned for this week done oh well I can get the other two done while I'm waiting for these parts to return. Thanks a lot for watching. Sorry, how do you go? Eh. <laughs> it's all those.